up YouTube, it's Clormo with another Logic Pro X tutorial on my Logic Pro X tutorial series season 2 and I'm going to be talking about another synthesizer which is the ESP and finally I'm going to deliver on my promise this is going to be a very short video and you're going to see why right away uh, but before we go in just as usual uh, a reminder that this um, video is part of the new round for the $20 Amazon gift card giveaway so if you want to participate and you want to have a chance to win that then just make sure that you're a subscriber and comment on this video so without further ado let's go into the tutorial ESP so by now it should be pretty familiar how to um, add a logic software instrument if you have been following my previous tutorials if you haven't then uh, in this track here I have an ESP as you, you can see the interface right there and I can select it from the instrument drop down I have uh, the the other three tracks that I have here are the synths that I have discussed already just in case I want to cross reference them but if you have been following uh, that won't be necessary because you're gonna get the gist of it right away and just by looking at it you probably already did uh, get a good idea of what this synth does but without further ado what I'm just gonna do is I'm, we're, we're working first of all we're working with the same uh, MIDI notes that I have been doing from from the very beginning the ESP P stands for polyphonic so that's one of the key differences from the ESM which is a monophonic and that's why the ESM is better for a few sounds and the ESP is better for another set of sounds that being said the ESP is still good for for leads and basses and sound effects with noise which is something that you could achieve with the ESM with some tweaking but you cannot do chords with the ESM because it's monophonic. You can with the ESP. One quick note that I want to make. The reason why I'm doing the ESP after talking about the retro synth and the ES1. It's because the ESP is kind of... I, I, I figure it's like in between the retro and the ESM. You know, as far as functionality and options. The ES1 is, in my opinion, above all three to a certain extent but the logic behind the series was that I wanted to show you the, the the very beginning show you one of a higher end caliber or other than the ES2 which is a little bit more complicated than any of them combined then show you the retro which which is above the ESP in my opinion and then go back to the ESP because it's should be so simple by looking at it that I shouldn't have to talk <laughs> but you know I'm just obviously uh, doing an intro video so I want to make sure that whoever is looking at this first before all of these other ones has a good idea and then goes back and forth so same as with the other tutorials I'm gonna go from left to right and explain the, the, the key uh, components of the synth so we have our typical building blocks. Uh, we'll start with the oscillator parameters. We have our LFO parameters, which is something that you don't really have in the ESM, uh, well-defined, I would say. And then you have your filter parameters, which should, you should be very familiar with this by now, your normal frequency cutoff and your resonance. You have your level parameters, down here which you control the, the, the volume more than anything and how the volume is affected on this instrument then you have this ADSR intensity and velocity filter which is we're still really part of the filter parameters so uh, but they're to the right then you have your envelope or amplitude parameters which are which dealing with ADSR which by now if you have looked at my retro and ES1 tutorials then you know what that means but for those seeing this for the first time ADSR stands for attack decay 
sustain and release and this is all tied to what what is the volume contour of the sound that's 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 it's going over time right so then to the very far right we have some effects parameters which come in the form of a chorus and overdrive and this is effects that you will be adding to the resulting modulated filtered modulated uh, frequency or um, um, waveform oscillator sound however you want to call it and this is I'm gonna bring the ESM and you can see that's comparable right when you start looking at it it's just really the same it's just that your options are more open here obviously if I open the retro which is huge window you have the same type of uh, options but multiplied by a few times and the ES1 well you know just just takes it to another level but having described the building blocks I'm just gonna talk real quick about what each thing does hit play change view parameters and close this video up so from rep to right we have the typical pitch buttons you should be familiar with this by now nothing special just change the pitch we have a oscillator mixer which is analog to this right we had two oscillators and we could mix them up but in this case it's a uh, like a, an actual EQ mixer right so we have three three weight forms then we have um, this two pulse width type of modifiers for the rectangular you have seen this before also in the retro in ES1 and then you have a noise which you have seen in the retro by now so you can create some effects with that already out of the box then we have our LFO modulation choice of vibrato or the wah so if you if you move the knob this way you get a vibrato effect if you move this way you get a wah effect that I'm pretty sure affects the frequency and then the vibrato affects the the actual oscillator mixing that you're doing here right because if you mix some of the curves up uh, that's what you get so and then the speed is just you know the, the, the frequency which with with which you're gonna get this effect going both ways right and then going to the right we have our frequency cutoff and our resonance eh, stuff that we have seen before so I'm not gonna re-explain that but the frequency is just a cutoff a low low pass cutoff filter and then your resonance helps you boost or or cut your your frequencies you're around that frequency right so um, cut portions or boost portions of the around that frequency I should say so then these buttons here are equivalent to the key uh, to the key tracking that I showed in the beginning in the ES ES1 and the retro also has it in this knob here so this buttons here instead of having a, a nice slider we have some buttons so if you choose the one three then that's not the full keyboard strength right of the of that uh, it's not gonna follow the whole keyboard press the three three will and then the lower velocity notes will sound brighter so it's just the same thing as the key then we have this velocity filter which is part of the of the filter itself and the velocity filter knob itself it just sets the velocity sensitivity of the cutoff frequency modulation that has been applied by the envelope generator which is our ADSR so how this affects my cutoff frequency can be modulated by the velocity of the MIDI notes by using this slider same thing less more and then the ADSR intensity is just that you know it's the what amount 
of my ADSR modulation if it's full intensity or just lower intensity then I have uh, then we have the volume and velocity volume these two knobs here the volume is just the overall uh, instrument volume so that's very obvious and then the velocity volume it's how much that overall volume it's affected by the velocity of the MIDI notes so the more I have every note right is gonna have a bigger effect every velocity type of or I should say every range of the velocity or amount or magnitude that's the word I was looking for magnitude then we have our ADSR mixer which not nothing really more to add than we have seen before and then the actor effects I just explained them already the colors and an overdrive so I'm gonna recall the default and just play this a few times and start changing some of these parameters up so you can get a, um, an idea of what type of sounds you can achieve and let's give that a listen so that's like a normal type of 80s type of bass and obviously you have your some presets already here and like with anything else all of this is automatable so now I'm gonna start changing some parameters around I'm gonna take the uh, pulse width modifiers out Some, some mix there. Is that some vibrato? Make it brighter. You can hear the noise. And then I'm going to make the resonance a little bit higher. Notice the wah effect. The velocity filter is all the way up. Make it down a little bit. Use the SR intensity. Make it less attack. And then with a shorter decay. Some cars there. Some overdrive. So you get an idea, it's not that special after you have uh, dealt with the retro and the other synths, right? So but it's a pretty good instrument if you want to get some quick uh, sound effects with the noise and transition sounds and some transition automation or bass and so, you know, typical bass sounds too. So it's pretty good for that too so if you are thinking about bases only I would say ESM and ESP are good starting points so that you uh, get a hand of how to create some your own bass sounds and then graduate into the other ones if you're still struggling with some of the concepts so anyway that's uh, I think that's good enough for an intro and with that I'm gonna leave you for now and then on my next tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the ES2, which is a little bit intimidating if you don't have a good idea of what a synthesizer does and what the parameters mean. But 
since it's just gonna keep it at that intro level shouldn't be that bad <laughs> I hope so we're gonna be talking about the S2 then in the next tutorial thanks again for supporting and following social media and all that good stuff hopefully um, I'm gonna be starting doing some videos in Spanish of all this stuff that I have done for my people that speak Spanish you know Espanol so see you in the next video peace out YouTube